Now, imagine living with the knowledge that you have a 50% chance of developing Alzheimer's during your 40s. That is the reality for a group of Colombian families who carry a rare genetic form of the disease. But now they are the focus of a major scientific effort to find a treatment for the disease. Our science correspondent Tom Clark travelled to Colombia where, in the remote highlands of Antiquia, he met the families of the small town of Don Matias and the team of researchers who are planning the first clinical trial of a treatment to prevent Alzheimer's. Antioquia, Colombia's isolated northern highlands. I'm with Lucia Madrigal, a nurse on her rounds from the regional medical school. Until recently, many of Lucia's patients were only accessible by horse or on foot. Once she was detained for a week by drug traffickers who still control much of this area. Now the roads have opened up, Lucia is closer to her patients, a group who lived for centuries in the shadow of a dreadful illness, more prevalent here than anywhere else on earth. Aquí. Ophelia has Alzheimer's. She's only 51, but the disease has already taken her memories. Now she's losing the things she learned as a child. How to talk, how to write her name. Ophelia, oh, siga. Ophelia. Her symptoms are the same as for millions of Alzheimer's sufferers around the world. But Ophelia's disease is very different. She was always going to get it. She carries a mutated gene passed down from her mother, a cruel inheritance of early onset Alzheimer's that's been in the family for generations. La mesa. Since their mother died, her older sister Aura has run this household. She tells me that of 16 brothers and sisters, eight inherited the disease. Four have died so far. Ophelia and her brother Gustavo now need full-time care. Well, for me, it's very hard, because you think, for who's it more difficult, for oneself or the sick ones? Maybe we can say that they don't feel anything, but the truth is you don't know what they feel. In and around their town of Don Matias, they're not the only family suffering. As many as 5,000 people in Antioquia carry the mutation. Each of their children stand a 50% chance of inheriting the gene. Usually the disease strikes at just 49 years of age. Here, the elderly watch the young die of Alzheimer's. It's thought a single Basque settler brought the disease here in the 18th century. His direct descendants carry what's called the Pesa mutation, a nickname given to Colombians from these hills. The remoteness of these northern Colombian towns and villages is the reason the Pesa mutation has survived passed on from generation to generation of large families with little contact with the outside. But after nearly 300 years of isolated suffering, these families' plight has come to the attention of the wider world because the mutation they carry could hold the key to preventing Alzheimer's in millions of sufferers around the world. Francisco Lopera is the Colombian neurologist who discovered the mutation. For 25 years, he's worked to gain the trust and support of families. Now he and they are at the center of a major international scientific campaign. Here we have the severe problem of having the world's largest group of people with inherited Alzheimer's. But people are engaged with it. And families know that if they get involved in disease research here, they're contributing globally. They not only do it in order to find a solution for their problem, but also to help others. We travelled with Dr. Lopera back to Don Matias. With him is the man who coordinates Alzheimer's research at Harvard University in the US. Adrian Ivinson has come to watch his colleague's routine evaluation of Ophelia and Gustavo but also assess the potential these families have for a radically new approach to curing Alzheimer's. You notice a difference in her? Now, the last time she was talking better. Now she has lost many lines. They're the center of attention because efforts to treat Alzheimer's worldwide are failing. There is no predictive test for the common form of the disease so drugs are only given once symptoms are apparent. 
By then, damage to the brain may be irreversible. Alberto. But here in Colombia, a simple genetic test reveals exactly which family members will develop the disease decades before it strikes. This gives us an incredible window of opportunity to look at the very earliest stages of, of this disorder. That gives us the opportunity to do two things. First of all, it gives us an opportunity to look at the disease process well before it's so bad that it causes symptoms. But it also gives us the opportunity to try any future medications, any future drugs in a person whose brain is not so badly damaged. And back in the regional capital, Medellin, Dr. Lopera and his university colleagues are already on the case. They're not testing a new drug, but an existing one. With the support of two other US institutions, they've recruited 300 family members in the first clinical trial aimed at preventing Alzheimer's. Participants have given a blood sample and been tested for the mutation, but like all the families being studied, they've agreed not to know the results. As early as next year, researchers will try using an existing Alzheimer's drug and assess whether given much earlier it can successfully prevent or delay the disease. It's probable that five years is too early for us to expect a cure for the disease, but it's possible that in five years there might be interesting treatments that will delay the disease. And in the medium term it may be possible to find a cure. I don't know how long it will take, but that is the hope that we have. One thing that raises that hope, say other Alzheimer's experts, is the relationship here between the scientists and their research subjects. And these cabinets hold the most striking demonstration of that alliance. Within are stored more than 50 brains, donated by families whose loved ones died because of the mutation. It's the world's largest collection of brains from people with inherited Alzheimer's. It may be unsettling, but a brain bank, as it's known, is essential in providing clues about how Alzheimer's begins to destroy the brain and how future drugs might work to stop it. I saw this patient in the last two stages of his illness, when it was very advanced. This patient's quite interesting, as his brain isn't as damaged as one would expect for someone who was ill for so long. This brain bank highlights one of the most powerful and poignant aspects of this research. These scientists knew the man whose brain this is while he was alive and followed closely as Alzheimer's took first his memories, then his life. And for his part, through this selfless donation, he's continuing to contribute to this research, even in death. But outside the lab, back in the homes of families like Ophelia, the spectre of inherited Alzheimer's remains as terrifying as it always has been. And science can't move quick enough to allay the fears of those who may already carry the mutation. It's the question I'm asked most, more than any other question. <laughs> and um, I would like to be able to tell you how long it will take, but we can't. In all likelihood, a cure is still a long way off. But the contribution these families have already made could lead to new advances in Alzheimer's. Anything that delays the progression of the disease, even for just a few years, will help future generations here, as well as the one in ten of us that will develop Alzheimer's when we get old. Tom Clark, Channel 4 News, in Don Matias, Colombia.